Namaste, Vidhi. Good morning. How are you doing in London? Welcome to our show. Namaste. Thank you very much for having me here. A very, very good morning and good evening to all of you, my dear friends. We are now on the seventh edition of Sri Shakti, which is the power woman of Vini Yoga. So we are very, very delighted to have today Vidhi from London uh, join us for this interview to discuss about <clears throat> this uh, Vini Yoga and how it has benefited her and how it can benefit others, etc. And joining us in this conversation. So we are extremely, extremely happy. And my dear friends, we are also very happy that you are joining. So if you are watching this, kindly make a comment to let us know that you are there so that we are absolutely happy and delighted that you are there and we will acknowledge that. So today is the 25th of March, 2021. And uh, Vidhi is one of our wonderful Vini Yoga therapist based in England, London, the capital. And uh, she has had uh, <clears throat> almost a decade of uh, experience with Vini Yoga. And she's originally from India, from Delhi, <clears throat> but uh, now she's a, a citizen of the United Kingdom. And she's doing amazing work there with her research, which we will come to in a little bit. And we are very, very happy that she's a wonderful and excellent representative of the Vini Yoga tradition. So welcome Vidhi to this show and uh, let our viewers know how you feel. And uh, <clears throat> we'll start. Thank you so much for having me here. Um, before I start, I would start the session with a chant, if that's okay. It's perfect. We are all delighted if there is chanting. So please go ahead. <clears throat> It's Shraddha Saptam. So if you uh, know this chant, you can chant with me in your own homes or wherever you are. Om Shraddha Yagne Samidhyate Shraddhaya Vindate Habehi Shraddham Bhagasya Murdhani Vachasa Vedayamasi Priyagga Shraddhi Dadataha Yagga Shraddhi Didasataha Priyam Bhoje Shuyajvasu Idam Ma Uditam Kridhi Yatha Deva Asureshu Shraddham Mogreshu Chakrire Evam Bhojeshu Yajvasu Asma Kamuditam Kridhi Shraddham Deva Yajamanaha Vayur Gopa Upasate Shraddha Gung Hridaya Yakutya Shraddha Yahuyate Habehe Shraddha Pratar Havamahe Shraddha Madhyante Nampare Shraddha Gung Surya Sianim Rache Shraddhi Shraddha Paye Hama 
ಶ್ರದ್ಧಾಧೇವಸ್ತೆ ಶ್ರದ್ಧಾ ವಿಶ್ವಮಿದಂಜಗತ ಶ್ರದ್ಧಾಂಕಾತರ ಹವೇಶಧಯಸಿ Thank you so much Vidhi for this chanting it's wonderful can you kindly explain to our audience what just this chant is about and why you chose to do this chant to begin our conversation today let's say this was the first chant that facilitated my you want to call it transformation or the change and all the blockages that i was facing and um experiencing when i came into the vini yoga tradition and shraddha for me is really 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 dear because that's the only thing that is able to move me away from fear and i want to give my um rendrance or um surrender to shraddha excellent and it's also a female energy absolutely shraddha is definitely a feminine energy and it's uh, it's also the name of my wonderful daughter which my father named uh, so it's it's very very good that you chant so i can also remember my daughter So with he tell us um, a little bit about how you were drawn into the vini yoga tradition first and uh, what has sustained you all these years now it's i think a decade since you came to the tradition mm. the the lineage has drawn me to this uh, tradition the um, um when i was looking to do my yoga ther- i did my y- yoga teacher training in the uk and i was looking to do a yoga therapy training course and everywhere i was looking it was taking me back to vinaya yoga every training course that i was looking at it was going back so that um that um that led me to chennai and to the source which is what i think especially for yoga therapy when yoga tra- tradition is the source i agree with you and can you tell me can you tell us a little bit more about what has sustained you for these 10 years like what is it that has kept you here so when i first came into vinaya yoga tradition i was very ill um ill physically um mentally emotionally and um when i came um to chennai to study for yoga therapy i didn't realize that it's actually going to um also work on my own self um as well and i think um kausad has a picture of when i had uh, joined uh, vini yoga and where i was in physical space at that point would you I like don't... to share this with the group yes please it just shows before and after um so i found that i used to suffer with or i do suffer with a um uh, immune system disorder which affects my skin and my muscles and when i met uh, kaustav and menika mamji um in chennai that was the state of my neck um i wasn't sure where it was coming from at that point and um there was a lot of muscle pain i was not able to walk for more than 10 minutes i was having difficulty climbing 
Um, and I would go into Western medicine and I would get some relief. And then after a few months, I would go back again into the same state. And this ping pong was going on for over 10 years before I came to Vinaya Yoga tradition. Um, I received the tools. I received uh, the most beautiful chanting session that your mom did with your father uh, very briefly for one session. And I remember very clearly at that point, I was really anti-chanting because growing up in India, um, it, and especially in Delhi, I was trying to run away from the traditional stuff. But when I sat there in that room that day, the floodgates opened up. And I have no idea what was happening to me, but I knew there was something was happening. Um, and that's where Shraddha, there, was, there were no um, English words that were told to me, but I felt this Shraddha in that room, in every single cell of my body. And with that trust, with that conviction, I came back to London with my practice to heal myself. And what sustained me again is the Shraddha. Um, it's experienced rather than here. Um, and it has come to me every time I needed it. Um, this tradition is one of the only traditions I know of that is always there for you, whether it's your teacher, whether it's the Sangha that is created in the lineage, the, the community is there to support you, to love you in your challenging. You might not talk to them about it, but the fact that they're all there in unity together has sustained me over these years. And there have been some really difficult times in the last few years. Of course, and uh, please let us remind the audience that it's not just you who has been going through difficult times the last few years, the whole world is <laughs> going through the last few years. Um, well, we did talk, we did show the people about uh, the illness that you had, it's, it's the autoimmune disorder that you talked about. Um, how was the, how, how did it change after you started the, the Vini Yoga therapy practices? I think people would love to know if you improved, how long it took for you to improve, et cetera, what happened after that. So that would be a very helpful um, sharing if you can to the group. Um, so what happened, I think the, 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 the part that led to my healing was, um, the starting point was the Shraddha. But as I was going into uh, my time with my practices, there was a lot of opening up that was happening and it ne I needed um, strength to cope with it. I needed uh, courage <laughs> to carry on uh, because whatever I was seeing, uh, it, it, the mind has an ability to fool yourself with, um, things that you want to believe in that will keep you in this um, victim mode. Illness brings a victim mode in you. And it's sometimes it's really weird. You don't want to be ill, but you want to be ill because you're, it's comforting that it's, it's what you know, it's the pattern that your body knows. Um, and to move and to accept that you are being a victim and, and there's another way. The, the teachings came into play here. The teachings, this lineage is, is, and this is what I loved about this lineage was that every single thing that was taught to us, whether it was for yoga therapy training, whether it was for your own personal transformation, it was rooted, absolutely rooted in theory, absolutely rooted in the scriptures and in the teachings. And 
one person will say something when another person will say something, but scriptures are there. And, and that, that authority um, really helped me to see the light. I think um, in one of the other sessions that you had, um, um, it was told that Yoga Sutra is the Amritam of life. That totally resonates with me. I still have an app of Yoga Sutras in my phone and I'm, whenever I'm in need, whenever I'm in trouble, whenever my wounds are being dug by somebody, I look at it and I bring that teaching out to remind myself. So from victim, I think it took me to empowerment to say I, I am not a um, um, victim of my illness. I am me, not my disease. That's great. That's great. Thank you so much. <clears throat> and if I have to extend this conversation a little bit, which I think is very, very important um, that you are a good example and a role model for many, uh, many women there as well. And, you know, you <clears throat> are a single mother and you are balancing both your personal life, uh, which includes a lot of challenges being a single mother to two children and also your professional life, which we will come to in a minute. How has the, how has yoga helped you balance these roles? Because today there's a lot of single mothers who are struggling to find balance between their role as a mother and their professional career. And somehow they need to find a space for yoga, perhaps, that may help. So maybe you can share your own journey about this, which is, I think, very, very good. Um, I don't think you need find you need to find space for yoga. I think yoga is in every part of my life. Um, it's 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 how whoever is joining this uh, journey should think of it. It's not a, a box thing, just like an illness is not a box thing. Yoga is not a box thing and it, it, it goes through the entire spectrum. But how yoga helps me to deal with my challenges and my wounds um, in that respect, it helps me to know and it gives clarity it reminds me constantly and gives me clarity. What is the purpose of me for me as a mom, as a professional, um, as a caregiver? And it's constantly reminding me that you may get distracted here and there with other stuff and with all the um, challenges that you get and you can get off centered. But yoga is the one thing that that does bring me into this alignment of what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling and what I'm saying are all in unison and that are aligned with my purpose. That should be aligned with my purpose. And when I go off, I get reminded by my teacher um, and with the teachings that connect to that dharma, connect to that clarity, connect to that um, purpose that you're here for. Why is it more challenging for women in today's society compared to men? What's your view? Because I can't offer that view because I'm a man, but what's your view? <laughs> because it is a fact. I've seen so many of my students who are women who struggle. Um, I've seen you. Uh, but of course, you, you, you have faced it very well and you are facing it very well, but it looks like it's a much greater challenge for women than for men. Why is it, that, why is it so? I think um, this is not for everybody, but most everybody um, who bear children, they, because naturally we are the providers for children, um, care providers for children, you tend to take that role um, as your priority and then you give up your other, um, other means of 
fulfilling yourself like earning uh, financials and as a mother why it becomes so challenging is because then you find yourself in a place where you're given up I won't say given up it's beautiful it's what you want to do but you're not in the market anymore so when you come out of being a, and become a single mom it's like now where do I go <laughs> you're 13 years on and all you know is how to cook or take care of children which is which is the I think the most difficult job to do on this planet and it doesn't pay um, so I think it's challenging because financially you're um, torn women I think are emotionally more um, attached as well to problems if if I say that uh, so it becomes emotionally challenging and it becomes financially challenging um, and then safety as well I mean to be on your own as a woman in a house in a big city it's it's not particularly that safe so there are lots of factors luckily I don't get faced with um, or I don't care about the judgments of other people, but uh, that is also another issue for a lot of other communities where being single is looked down upon and you have to face that. Somehow it's not there for men, but it is much bigger deal for a woman. And you feel that that's the, that's the case even in a very, very um, modern city like London? I can understand if it was a city like Chennai, which is very conservative, uh, you think that's the case even for somebody in London? In the, I presume, I don't, like I said, that doesn't affect me. It's maybe because I've blocked myself over it or I, 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 don't, I don't really care about it. But I would imagine it is for the, a lot of Indian community here, but I'm speaking just as a presumption. It's, it's not something I do know, but I think it, it does exist. I think there was a case of, um, 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 MP in, um, in, in the parliament that w was domestically abused and to, for her to come out and speak out about this in the parliament was extremely difficult and it became a big news when she did come out. So with that fact, I think even for somebody like an MP who's at a very high position had to fight the societal challenges Wow, that's, that's very, very challenging, yes. Um, so it's, what's, what's your advice to the women who are facing that kind of a situation? What is your advice? Kavacham, <laughs> when, you, when you're faced with these kind of, firstly, protect yourself through a Kavacham. And secondly, when I went, went back to know your purpose, all of these are just distractions. What is the purpose? Why did you become a single mom? Not every, every, you just don't get married and then get separated. <laughs> you know, that's not, there is a reason why there is a separation. So if, if your reason is pure, like you're, that you're fulfilling your dharma, let's say to protect your children, um, or even to protect yourself, then just reconnect to that purpose why you're there and 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 protect yourself and have a good support system like what Vinayuga tradition provides. Um, so can you tell the people who are not familiar with Vinayoga what is it that the Vinayoga tradition provides? Safety. Number one it provides safety and as a woman I can say that confidently that it provides safety, it provides a container, it provides support, um, and it provides a woman to be courageous to face those challenges because you're feeling safe, because you're feeling contained, and because you're feeling supported. And then you have the teachings with you as well. What is unique to the Vini Yoga tradition in your view when compared to, let's say, other traditions that you have probably 
have in in England, for example, you said you did your teacher training in England, so you well, you probably have seen the yoga market there. You are dealing a lot with the yoga market today as well because you're working as a yoga researcher and a yoga therapist. So what's the difference or when you compare the Vini yoga tradition to the other kinds of yoga that is there in the market, what's, what's unique? I think there's no faff in this tradition. It is pure and honest. Um, it's embedded in a theory, it's embedded in the scriptures. Um, um, it's, it's the roots. I feel the difference between other um, schools and this school is that this school is, this lineage is, is the root. It's, it's firmly grounded, um, it's stable. Um, the other schools come and they float about they're more bothered about the, I don't know, it's, it's um, again, again, these are all presumptions, but I can only go with the experience of the other schools that I've gone to. I just felt that it's, um, they, they're not rooted in theory. They're not rooted in uh, lineage and, and the scriptures, which are like thousands of years old. So, uh, which is one of the challenges I'll talk about when, when I come to my professional world. Sure. Um, what about, uh... What about this idea that uh, you talked about that Vini Yoga provides you the teachings and the teachings hold you, et cetera. One of the things that we are emphasizing a lot in the Vini Yoga tradition is the relationship between the teacher and the student. Uh, whereas this is not really so much emphasized in most other traditions. And there are some people in the Western world who are even saying that uh, yoga should go beyond uh, the lineage or beyond the guru. Uh, what is your experience about it? What is your feeling about it? I think it's all rubbish. Um, if you don't have a container when you're going through personal growth and pro personal transformation, if you don't have a mentor to guide you when you're going through uh, professional stuff, um, challenges, it's how would you know how would you how would you um assess where you're going and and the teacher and student relationship um gives you that that uh, mirror that mirroring of who you are and if 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 you're going on though because you can't see your own self a lot of the time you just fool you like i said mind fools you so it'll only go with what is comfortable. But if you have a mentor, if you have a teacher, then it you can get you can recheck whether you're actually going off tangent or whether you're in the same in the right path or not that you started. But this is this is really important. The reason why all of the perhaps all of the traditions are saying that you have to go beyond the teacher-student relationship is because I don't think they want to be a student. To be a student, you have to be open. You have to let down your ego, your asmita, to receive what is coming. So I don't think they want to be student. They just want to have the hat of the teacher all the time. It requires a lot of courage. That's very true, that's very true. Another thing that I want to ask about and I think this also related with the work that you will do, which we will discuss in a moment, is that many other traditions are emphasizing on standardizing everything. Like if you go to an Ashtanga yoga class in, in London, New York, or India, or Mysore, or Australia, it's the same series that is taught. We don't do that in the Vini yoga tradition, not just across the cities, but even in the same school, in the same teacher, when they have different students, we don't teach the same thing. And even for the same student, we don't teach the same practice uh, every time they come. So what is, what is your view on that? And what is your experience about it? Especially as a woman who has been through a lot of changes in your body, um, as you're transitioning through your life, how does this resonate with you? Um. 
I think this is the, the what resonated the most about this tradition for me in terms of practice was that it was always evolving um, for me as my context was changing. I had a different practice, but there are a lot of subtle elements to that is when you do get a new practice and when you don't do the same thing, firstly, like I said, mind likes to get comfortable. So firstly, you're challenging your mind by getting a new practice because the breath work changes, postures will change, focus of meditation would change. So it has to adjust and learn to change with on the mat so that when changes happen off the mat, you can apply those. Um, standardizing everything will make it, does make it just mechanical to me. Um, and you, again, you can fool yourself with it. Um, in terms of even work, if, if I've been asked and I've been told this problem that you'll be more, um, when I'm doing my research, that we need standardized protocol. Um, we need, um, it, it's not as cost effective to change. But the one thing that my patients um, said to the researcher, uh, an independent researcher was, the reason why they followed yoga therapy practices was because the therapist took time to draw each practice for her with the week that they had gone through. So it's so attention to detail that you give. And in that attention to detail, the care begins because you're getting that care. So the care response starts happening, whether they've started practicing or not, just the receiving of that care starts the healing process. That's wonderful. And that leads into your, your, the conversation about your work. Tell us what is it that you do? What are the things that you do? Because I think you do a few things in your work with yoga. Please let us know what you're doing and how uh, uni yoga tradition is helping you to do this in your job. Um, so I am a yoga therapist, firstly. Uh, so I see patient, uh, students, patients, people um, when they come with uh, illness. Uh, what I find is that people have knocked at so many different doors and it's like, okay, now I'm going to try yoga therapy. And then that's what starts the healing process. So firstly, I'm, I'm a yoga therapist. I'm also a yoga researcher. And the reason why I've gone into research is because um, I was, um, this whole Lycra fitted Lululemon tops of pretzel poses that people do, um, in the West with, and, and associate the perception of yoga to physical postures. Um, I think it's very limiting and it's degrading to what actually yoga is, um, there's, it's so much more. There's so many more tools that we have in our toolbox. And I feel that through research, because that's how um, medical world accepts um, new, <laughs> new mod modalities, although this is such an ancient modality, but in their mind, it's the latest fad or whatever, um, is through research by having some evidence. So I uh, conducted my or the UK first yoga therapy uh, research project in a hospital setting where we did each session as it's meant to be done not with a standardized protocol we had chanting going on in the middle of a hospital out setting uh, outpatient setting um, and the energy, this is what the staff in the hospital said, the energy of the waiting room was so much calmer. Um, they weren't shouting at their staff because they had a long waiting time. Um, so I, I feel really passionate about research because I want to do the research to bring evidence to the Western world that there is more to yoga than what their perception is. 
And then I'm also doing, um, leading on to that, I have uh, last year when uh, COVID began, I started doing um, masters in public health because that will teach me all the skills to do the research and take it to the next level. And hopefully I will be able to take the yoga research with my training in public health further. How Vini Yoga has helped me through this time? That question. I think in every step, in every single step, I received blessing, firstly, from you um, and from um, the tradition. And, um, and, and, and it's there, the container is there always, even when the challenges come. It's very interesting that you said that they were, they were even chanting in the hospital in UK. That's pretty amazing. How did you convince them to do it? I didn't have to convince even them. In even in Chennai, I cannot go to a hospital and chant. They would, they would kick me out. You know, I may do it in a private room for a private patient that I know, but not generally for everybody in the public area. I think the reason why I was able to do it was because there's a white coat syndrome in people who are ill. Um, if your consultant or your doctor says that, okay, I'm referring you to yoga therapy and whatever she says, take the yoga pill as the consultant always said, take the yoga pill as she gives it, then we'll check on you after 10 weeks. So I think there was a white coat syndrome there that they trusted the consultant who trusted the lineage and trusted the work we, would, we are doing here. And that facilitated um, every tool to be done as it's meant to be done. And then of course, the next step was, that was a starting point. So it was, again, Shraddha comes in, they had Shraddha in the consultant that developed Shraddha in the, in the healing modality, but then they experienced the benefits of it themselves. Yep. So when they went back home and did their practice, they were initially just like a bit soft in, in chanting, but as on the 10th session, they were chanting as uh, with full confidence. So it's experience led as well. That's fascinating, that's fascinating. Um, what are the challenges you face in doing the yoga research in the UK? What are the challenges that you face? You said earlier that you face- Yes. Challenges. So I had presented, I had gone and presented my findings, um, not my findings, but our findings of the research project um, and on, on, the, on the screen, there was 65% drop in anxiety levels, 49% drop in depression levels, blah, 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 we were going on. And, um, and I said, this is rooted in theory and this is rooted in tradition. And this is a, an ancient tradition um, that we followed. So one of the lead consultants in the meeting comes up, it's like, well, the fact that it's so old, we don't wanna believe in it. We want new knowledge. This, the challenge that I was facing was that the Western medicine thinks that ancient means outdated. It's gone. It's not meant to be followed. So get the latest evidence. But I think it's ignorance-based medicine because just because they haven't got curious about the benefits and they haven't evaluated, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Correct. Correct. What I told them. And did they accept what you said? I don't know. I got I got the project, so he can <laughs> he can go out there and say what he likes. I was the one doing chanting in the hospital rooms. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Um, and you are working in uh, you are doing many of these yoga therapy sessions. I know this that you're doing it in the hospital setting. You are doing it. Uh, many people are ref doctors are referring their patients to you, etc. Um, there are two aspects of this question, I believe. One is how open are generally the medical doctors 
um, towards things like yoga. Um, and secondly, um, what, why is it that they refer them to you? Hmm. Um, so I think it's quite clear to the yoga uh, med, med, Western medical world that there are loads of benefits of yoga. That's, they know that. What my worry, I'm on, also on the um, board of Complementary Natural Healthcare Council where uh, with other board members, we're setting standards for delivering yoga therapy sessions. I think there's a difference between fitness yoga and yoga therapy. Um, and the, the Western medical world, I don't think they're educated enough to know that difference yet. Um, and that is what I see as a part of my work here is to educate the um, Western medical professionals that there is a difference between if you're completely fit and healthy, then you can go to the Bikram yoga class if they want. But if you're ill, then you need yoga therapy, which is yoga chikitsa. And, and in, again, in the theory, there is a clear distinction, even in the scriptures about that. Um, why do they refer to me or to our tradition? Is I think when they see their patients changing and one of the comments of um, what participant of the research study to the consultant was I can manage my illness now and apparently this was a really big deal for him because he's a, co a consultant in chronic illness for him his patient coming and telling him I can manage my own illness is a big deal um, so I think as the uh, consultants and doctors are seeing the changes within their patients, um, they're developing that faith and the shraddha in the, in the yoga therapy work that we're doing here. That's great, that's great. <clears throat> I have another question that may be a bit uh, personal, uh, but I think you, you can manage it very well. Um, there's a lot of pressure on women, uh, especially because of the media, to, to look at a certain way of ask this with other women as well. And therefore this concept of this body image uh, is a very important aspect in uh, uh, today's, let's say, psyche, people's psyche. And many, many problems arises from that uh, uh, for the young girls. And the age is becoming even more younger and younger. Like I recently read a statistic that um, girls less than 17, uh, about 17 and below, 75% uh, to 80% of the girls in the US were not happy with their body images. Now you are mother to two girls. How is the conversation? What kind of conversation do you have with them? Do they care about it or do they not care about it? How do you manage this? What do you what do you talk with them? How do you manage this? I think the um, it, it's it's a lot deeper question, um, and I'll try to be succinct about it. But um, body images comes from fear, so when when you are when i'm addressing this issue with my daughters well, luckily touch what they don't have that issue right at least till now um is to be comfortable to remind them to be comfortable with who they are trying to be someone else is what the problem is and if they can't fit with the um trend um then, then, um, then they get scared, and and for me, I think with children and is to give the tools and facilitate their them to develop the sense of empowerment, the sense of um, courage to be different if they want to be. 
or or uh, be happy with what what they have and be have a feeling of um, being blessed with a healthy body. I think the tools of yoga and yoga sutra says um, contentment and 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 um, um, I think that those tools of the attitudes, the yamas and the niyamas and the and the attitudes that Yoga Sutra talks about, are key in this aspect. Well, let's leave your daughters aside. Thank you. Touch wood, you're not. Uh, they don't have this problem. You said, but I'm quite sure that you probably have encountered some students or patients who have been referred to you, who are challenged by this, and it, it's a huge issue because it affects many, many things in a person's life, self-confidence, self-worth, self, then self, therefore it can translate into uh, failures in relationship, failures in job, in, in the career and things like that. How do you advise them? What is it that you give them to, to empower themselves? Um, I think this is all shame-based. Uh, a lot of education now is shame-based. Um, and and that drives this uh, fear. Um, the the tools that I offer to these students, firstly, is is um, my work with them would be to build on their confidence. So I think one of the tools that really 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 works in this area is chanting. Um, to be able to speak and to chant a, a foreign language requires confidence. So if, if they're given this practice on the mat, which is in a safe environment in their own room, they're able to slowly, safely build that confidence. Um, I, I don't have um, um, words to explain how the process happens because I don't know how the process happens, but it's practice, it's tapasya, it's swadhyaya, um, tools of swadhyaya that helps them. And then Ishwar Pranidhana, that surface in, in developing and taking them from this feeling scared to not be able to fit to I'm going to do what I believe in. It's great, it's great. I have one last question for you. Is yoga more suited to women or to men? Because if you look at today's uh, yoga market, it's mostly women and traditionally it was mostly men. So that's why I'm asking you this question. What is your view about it? Is yoga more suited towards men or is it too suited towards women? I think yoga is suited for anybody who's got a mind. <laughs> because yoga is not for the body, it's for the mind. So if, you, if a human being has got a mind, it's suited for that, whether it's a man or a woman. But I think the reason why it's more now towards the women is because it's taken this perception of, I think people get confused with yoga as stretching, which, um, because naturally the female body is more flexible than a man's body, um, they tend to go into that. And also, um, it, of course, then you can break it down which tradition they go to. If they're going into Ashtanga, then there, it'll be more of a stronger type of physically stronger type of a woman who would be attracted to that. Um, but I don't think it's gender specific. It, it is for anybody who wants to work on their mind. I think this whole physical concept of yoga needs to be taken out of it, of yoga word. And because you say that yoga is more about the mind, do you think that that could be one reason why more women are doing it? Because women are much more comfortable, I feel, in my experience, to, to look at themselves. And that's why they are often you know, statistically also there are numbers which say that women approach uh, doctors and counselors much more earlier than men do. Men wait for the last minute when everything collapses and then they are saying, okay, fix me, you know? 
I would I would say yes that it that would be the case and also um all the men is going they're going to kill me but I think women have less egos than men do um so when when you're faced with a teacher who's telling them the truth and it's hurting the ego I think the women are more open to receiving that than men might be I don't know but that's that I'm being <laughs> Not fair on them. You are walking on very delicate territory, <laughs> but I think in general, uh, I think there is a point to what you are saying. Although, uh, although there may also be some some kind of exceptions as well, which will always. Be. But my father would agree with you because my father always used to make this statement, and this is my father's statement, not my statement. He would always say that the big issue that dominates the men is the ego. And the big issue that dominates the women is jealousy. This was his view. Uh, whether it's right or wrong, I don't know. I have not done a statistical sample for that, but it somehow falls into what you are saying. If you know what I mean. I th maybe that will be my next study. <laughs> I, I think you should do that. I think you should do that and uh, see how genders respond to yoga uh, because it is a quite an interesting uh, topic especially today uh, a lot of people are thinking about these kind of gender issues are becoming more and more in discussion today you know um, so you should do that you should do that you should do that um i did say that that was the last question but i still have one more question that i would like to ask you is that um a woman's body changes a lot when she's young, then she's a mother, she's going through menopause. There's a lot of changes that go through the woman's body. Um, how does yoga, say for example, in the, our tradition, the mini yoga tradition, resonate with that? Like what, what is it that mini yoga offers to this changes of the woman's body. I think it's a very important point. I think, I think the fact that I remember um, there was uh, a book that your father had written about um, his father. And in that, he had mentioned that in the Raj time, British Raj time, I think, um, women were not allowed to learn yoga um, in India. So, which is really fascinating because previously, before your grandfather came into the picture, the health of a woman was not respected. But I know that with, with T. Krishnamacharya coming into, Sri T. Krishnamacharya coming into um, the focus, he started teaching chanting to women, which was totally unheard of uh, in those times, because he believed that the health of the woman is the most important thing to carry on the lineage, to carry on the next generation. Because if the health of a woman is not um, in good health, then how can the next generation be there or healthy? So I think that philosophy is there even now. I see um, Medica Mam teaching um, chanting and the way she teaches. It's, it's so um, empowering towards women. Um, the way you teach is empowering towards women. You're giving the key, the control to them to take care of their health. So I think Vinaya Yoga tradition empowers a woman to accept the changes and be comfortable with those changes as they're evolving. And because you, again, like you said previously, we change practice all the time as you're changing. Your body's changing, your practice changes, your context changes and you evolve with who you are. It's absolutely remarkable that my grandfather in those days opened the doors of yoga to women because in those days very, very, very few people were teaching uh, yoga to women. It was the uh, 
what do you call cultural societal norm of those days but he broke these norms and some people even challenged him for breaking these norms and he said well let's debate about it if you are interested and they never came to debate because they knew that they could not win that debate but it's it's absolutely essential as well um, that we take care of everybody's health not just man or woman and hopefully these gender discriminations are reducing further and further so that we can have <laughs> what krishna says samatwa balance between every gender that we have on this planet so that's great that's great and i'm very very happy that <clears throat> you participated in this if you would like to share some um, uh, thoughts or advice or just some feelings to all the wonderful ladies that are listening to you today because there are lots of ladies i see from the comments actually i see mostly ladies i only see one uh, male uh, mr solanki is the only male all the others are female what would your <laughs> advice be to them what would your message be to them um maybe there is one more guy or well, not two more guys yeah so it's mostly argument yes there is philip here is he not watching <laughs> how are you thinking he's i don't see philip he's not said there the comment so i don't know if he's there <laughs> um what is my message for women go power <laughs> uh no seriously um that is serious um just be who you are um uh, respect yourself everybody will respect you that's all i can say right now but there's lots more but i can go on then that's in, that's wonderful that the concept of respect because i think that is the biggest uh, obstacle for many of us today we don't respect ourselves and that's why we don't respect others and somehow when people people misunderstand arrogance as self confidence and self respect which is where uh, the line gets a bit uh, confusing for people but it's a very good message that you have shared my dear friends please respect yourself so that you can respect others and with this i have one more thing can i okay. say please and be honest with yourself first yes. this i tell all my students all the time because for us to move forward in the path of spirituality honesty is very important integrity and honesty are very important even a small lie we must not say as much as possible we must avoid telling a small lie as or well. even thinking yes hmm that's so all excellent with the respect and honest and that's back to you respect and honesty <laughs> yes namaste thank you very much dear friends and thank you for being here today and in a couple of weeks we will have our next interview and watch out for the announcement of the same thank you everybody thank you so much vidhi for sharing your time and sharing your wonderful thoughts thank you namaste namaste